This meeting is being recorded. Okay, you good. I'm good. You good. Amen. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. All right. <laughs> Lord, everybody. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. I tell you, it's such an anointing on this line this morning. I'm just so happy down in my spirit today. I, I, I was muted and I guess could nobody see me, but I've been almost crying through the whole thing with the songs and stuff, how God is just going to do a new thing in our lives. Amen. How God has given us the victory over everything that we that come against us, amen. I'm grateful today. First of all, I wanna get these accolades out of the way and then I'm gonna go into the word of God. I wanna honor everybody that's somebody and that's you today. I wanna honor pastor today. I wanna honor the deacons, Deacon Harry and Deacon Anthony and the Deaconettes and Bridget and all of you guys. I wanna honor you guys today. I'm so happy to be with my California family. I thank and I praise God for the invite. I thank and I praise God that he can share a word with, with, with you all today that come through me. I thank God for what he's doing all over. Amen. For God is truly, truly a good God and his mercy and do it forever. So I honor everybody today. God is so good. So I'm grateful and I am thankful. Amen bringing you greetings all the way from Houston, Texas, the Houston Lighthouse Trinity Church. Pastor Bishop Laverne Thurman is the pastor. I'm praising God today. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, I feel like I'm all by myself because I can't hear y'all say nothing. You know, when you're a minister, I want to hear some stuff, but I know y'all want to hear what God has to say. So God is good. So I'm going to start off today. I do have a, uh, if I could, title or message today, I want to say, I want to title this message today, if you don't like what you see in your life, and I'm going to say that again, if you don't like what you see in your life right now today, there are things in your life that's not just not happening for you. If you do not like what you see, I want you to do this for me. I want you to change what you say. Change what you say. Amen. Amen. Changing what you say is we're going to go into the word of God and we're going to change some things today. And we're going to stop saying, we're going to stop saying what we see. And we're going to change some stuff. And, and first of all, I want to go to Genesis. And I'm just going to hit around with some, 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 I'm going to hit around with some word today, with some scriptures today. And you guys can jot them down, put them in your heart, put them in your spirit, or do however you want them to do, or however the Lord leads you to do. But first of all, I want to go to Genesis 1, how God I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to hit on some stuff. And like I, my sister always tell me, Bishop Betty, I'll let you do the homework. So <laughs> by reading it yourself, but I am going to hit on it so you'll know where I am and where I'm coming from. In Genesis 1, God said, let there be. God said, let there be. So what part of that we don't understand when God said, let there be. If God said, let there be, God said, let there be, you know, the earth, he said the earth was void. And I can imagine he was looking out and said, oh, my God, it's so void. There's nothing here. I need to do something. And so what happened, he said, over in Genesis, God said, let there be. God said, let there be light. Let there be fragrance. Let there be, God said, let there be water. Let there be day and let there be night and let there be everything that he said in there and God said at the end it was good so many times we hear the word of God we know the word of God but we say different things contrary to the word of God so this is what I, I want to do today let's not say 
what's contrary to the word of God and say what God's words say and not what we see in our lives. Because so many times we go and we see different situations in our life when the enemy, and I'm not giving him no glory today. I would not dare give that straight the devil no glory today. But when the enemy come in and he rushed in like a flood, God said he would lift up a stand for us. And I know we've been going through situations. Well, I can speak for myself. I know I've been going through situations. I know about y'all, you know, California might be all right down there, but I know some folks here in Texas, I know they've been going through some stuff. And they've been battling some stuff. They've been battling stuff in their mind, battling stuff in their life, battling stuff with the children, battling stuff with the husband, the wife, battling stuff, just battling, battling, battling. This COVID like they want to take over, but it can't have us. It got to go in Jesus' name. So we've been going through some stuff. So I want to say this right here. I want to say this. When the enemy comes in, God said, the spirit of the Lord should lift up a stand against him. So why we have to worry about him doing anything to us? When God said, I got that stand lifted. I got you. You just follow through the word and do what you're supposed to say. You say what the word say. I got you if you say what the word say. And Philippians 4 and 13, you know, some of us have, I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. And God said, in Philippians 4 and 13, we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. And this is what I want, this is what I want us to start saying. I want us to start saying the word and not saying what we see, not saying. Oh, my household ain't nothing. Not saying, oh, my children ain't nothing. My husband ain't doing this. My wife ain't doing that. The cat and the dog is messing up. Well, stop saying all that and say, I can do all things through Christ that's strengthened up. And that's found in Philippians 4 and 13. You know, Second Timothy tells us about fear. It's so many scary folks in God, I tell you the truth. Now, I don't know about California, like I say, but I know Texas down here, there's some scary folks down here. They're scared to go to church now. The, the pandemic that came, they don't want to go to church. But you know what? They 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 scared to go to the grocery store. They ain't scared to go here. They ain't scared to go there. But when they come to the church, they oh, no, I can't come to the church. Fear is not of the Lord. Fear mm -hmm. is not of God at all. So why are you scared to get on the freeway and drive? Why are you scared to go out at night? Why, you know, God give us wisdom and he gives us knowledge on how to do, when to do. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to go to this scripture right here where it say over in Proverbs 3, 5, and they say, trust, that's another thing. See, we not, <laughs> trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Now, what part of that we don't understand? God said he's going to direct us. Okay, gosh, I'm going to do this or should I do this? God said, I got you. I'm going to direct you into where I want you to go. So yes, it's okay. And you know, when we go to God, we need a release from God. We need God to like I say, to lead and guide us. So many times we get out here by ourselves and we try to do things ourselves. We try to move by ourselves. We try to go here by ourselves. We try to go through battles by ourselves. But God said, I am with you through that. I got you through that. Fear is not of the Lord. So this is for the body of Christ today. If anybody got the I can't, you need to say I can do all things. If anybody is fearful today, you need to know that God said he have not given us that spirit of fear, but of power and a love, and a sound mind. What's wrong with so many crazy folks in the house of the Lord today? Well, they want to act like they're crazy anyway. God has given us a sound mind, and we're grateful and thankful for that today. And then, you know, have you ever just been around people that um, they would go, oh, Lord, call upon him. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, why are, you, why are you calling up on the Lord, telling the Lord, oh, Lord, what you're going to do? Why are, you, why are you saying what you're going to do when God already said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me? 
So why are we cutting up on him, telling him, I don't know what to do. But now if we go back over there, if we go back over to Proverbs and let him direct us, we know oh, what no. to do. So many, so many saints in God is not being directed from the Lord. They are out here on their own doing what they want. Doing what they want to do is just like back in the days. I'm doing my own thing. Well, I'm beg your pardon. We're not back in the days. We're in a new time now. And if you in God, you just can't do what you want to do. When you want to do it and how you want to do it. You have to get directions from God to lead you, to guide you into the truth. God is good today. God is good today. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. I know we ain't got that much time, but I do want to say this. I do want to say this. I do want to say that. You know, oh Lord, oh call upon him. My family not going, my family not doing the right thing. My husband not doing the right thing. My wife not, my children, my sister, my brother, they ain't gonna never stop doing this. They're gonna keep on partying. They're gonna keep on doing what they, they're gonna keep on out here in these streets doing. Well, you speaking damnation upon them. Stop it today. Stop speaking damnation upon people and upon your own life. One thing I love about Pastor Hare, Pastor Doris, I love you, lady. Let me tell you something. One thing I know, she know that word of God. She going to get in that word of God. She going to dissect that word of God. Have you ever just seen like the kids at school have a frog they cut apart and then you have to know every little connection and every little vein and everything. One thing I know, God has given her that spirit to do that. And I know she teaches very well. I love her teaching. I just love her teaching. I know she's a doctor in the word. I know she teaches, but she's a doctor when it comes to that word because she's not going to lead you astray when it comes to that word. So stop mm -hmm. saying, stop saying, stop saying these things. Stop saying that you can't do this and you can't do that and, and, and all that good stuff is speaking damnation up on your family, up on your friend. Now, I know this ain't for everybody today, but my, for the one that is for receiving, now for the one that you say, I got it going on, I know how to do all that, you got somebody don't know how to do all that and you can help them and carry that word to them. Amen. You can do that. That's right. Carry that word to him. Carry that word to them. Because, you know, the word sometimes it's a faulty, but if it don't hit you, we'll just say, well, you know what? That was a good word, but I know my sister needs that word. I'm going to carry that word to her. My brother needs that word. I'm going to carry it to them. Because it might not be for you because you might have made it there. You might be there. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 22 tells us life and death is in the power of the tongue. It can bring blessings, it can bring life, it can bring curses, and it could bring death. Stop speaking death up over your situation, up over your life, up on your job. Oh, how is your job today? Well, you know, it's a job. Well, no, 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 no. Thank you. Praise God that it's a job. And then say, God, I, I just know you will help me get better on this job. And you're going to give me another job or something. Just don't say, well, it's a job. You know, don't, 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 don't speak death. Don't speak death upon that situation. Don't do that. Cursing, cursing yourself, cursing your household, cursing your children. Because this tongue right here can say what it want to say, man. It'll mess folks up. It says life and death is in the power of the tongue of what you say. Stop speaking damnation over your family, over your friend, over your church. Well, the church shut down. Well, yeah, good. We just going to Zoom the rest of our life. Now, the devil is a lie. No, you ain't going to do Zoom the rest of your life. No, we're not going to be doing Zoom the rest of our life. Half of the church is not going to be shut down the rest of our life. No, they're not. Yeah, the enemy rushed in like a flood, but like I said, God lifted up that stand, and we thanking God for the stand that go stand right there and go bring us out in due season. When he get ready, we can't make God do nothing. It's all in his timing, not our timing. And that's another thing that we need to know. It is not our timing. It's God's timing. When God says time to move, it's time to move. Because you guess what? He's going to be with you in the midst of that. When you move, he's going to be right there. He's going to keep, keep it on in. And I'm, I'm going to throw this in and I'm going to go back. And you know, y'all know I always throw a little testimony or something in. I'm going to throw this in and then I'm going to go back. I thought the Lord about a situation in my body. And 
I, I was having problems with my left hip for years, for years, for years, for years. And I was saying, oh, mm -mm, I ain't finna do no surgery. Mm -mm, they ain't finna go in there and put nothing up in me. This me now, just, 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 saying, just saying what I didn't need to say. They ain't gonna do it. Four, five years, I'm hopping like hop along casting until I couldn't hardly hop no more. I had to almost get a cane and a walker to walk. I said, devil, you know what? You sure is stupid and you think I'm stupid, but I'm finna come out of this stoop that you think you have me in and I'm finna tell God about this replacement that I need. I went to the Lord. I went in prayer and I asked God. I said, God, I talked to God just like I'm talking to y'all. Now, God, now what's up? Now, Lord, now what about this hip right here? Now, you know what I need. God gave me a release in my spirit. And God said, you know what? It's okay. Go ahead and get the hip replacement. I'm like, okay, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that. I felt good in my spirit. I called my doctor. I got the hip replacement. And I, I can almost do Jane Brown on that hip. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> If I tell you I can move and almost do James Brown on that hip, God gave me a miraculous healing. And four weeks time, I was up moving around. I was back driving my car and everything. I was up driving my car. I was doing it all. People could not believe. Lula, what are you doing? I, I'm okay, I'm fine, because you know why I'm fine? Because God was in the midst of that situation. God said it was okay. And if God said it was okay, that sells it right there. Amen. That sells it. Amen. That sells that thing. So I, and there, I mean that the, the hip is doing fine. I can flip it and I can twist it and I can move it and I can do whatever I want with it. God gave me a miraculous healing when it comes to that hip. So that's why I say we have to talk the Lord about situations. We have to go to God and we have to be honest. We have to be honest. Lord, you know the problem I'm having. I don't have to tell you, you made this body. You made me, I didn't make myself. So now what about this and what about that? And then God's okay. And that's when the main thing that the enemy come and he attack our bodies. It's like tomorrow, I gotta go get a procedure done to my stomach. They gotta stick a scope all down up in there and do all that kind of stuff. But I know God got me. I'm not fearful and I'm not scared. I know God got me because over in Jeremiah, God, the word of God say, heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, Lord and I shall be saved. So God is gonna save me from whatever's going on with that. And he's definitely gonna heal me because I'm speaking the word. I'm saying what the words say. I'm not seeing the situation look bad. I'm saying, God, I know you got me in this situation. And I know you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do because your word don't fail. Your word never fail. It would not return void. So once you put it out there, it's, it, it's going to come back. It would not return void. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. So God is good. Now, that was just a little something of anybody going through something in their body and stuff. Consult the Lord. God got you. Now, I just wanted to throw that out there at you. But now I'm going to get back over here. I was, I was talking about life and death and the power of the tongue. And that's where we are right now. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Start speaking positive things. Take all the negativity out your mouth. Or just don't say nothing. Sometimes it, it's sometimes it's just good not to say nothing. Let me tell y'all something. My, my, my little three-year-old grandbaby, he used to be so bad at school. And I picked him up one day and I asked him, I said, Uriah, I said, how was your day today? He looked at me and said, I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> so by him not saying nothing, I know his day wasn't good at all. So sometimes you just have to say, I'm not saying nothing. I'm trusting, I'm believing God. Because once we put it out there, the enemy going to get it and run with it. So let's not even put it out there for him to run with it. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Heal me, oh Lord, Jeremiah 17, 14, when I shall be healed. And another thing. Trust. 
We got to trust God. Look like we trust everybody but God. We trust our friends. We go to our friends and we talk to our friends. Well, what you think about this? And your friend, you know, your friend is your friend. But if your friend ain't saved, think about feel the Holy Ghost. They can't give you too much good spiritual advice. You know what I'm saying? So you have to like watch what you go and talk to people because people sometimes ain't studying you. You know what I'm saying? They just want to hurry up and let you go ahead on with all that. All right, uh huh. All right, that. Mm -hmm, all right, bye bye. And and, and they <laughs> they not study your situation. You know what I'm saying? So trust in the Lord. We trust everybody sometimes, but God. But God tell us. God tell us. God tell us in Proverbs. Three, five, and six, it tells us, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I didn't say some. I didn't say maybe. I said all thine heart. Lean not unto your understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct our paths. And that's what we want to do today. We want to acknowledge the Lord to direct our paths in every which way we go to. You know, some sometimes somebody, and I'm speaking to the body today right now, I'm speaking to the body of Christ right now. And like I said, if it's not you passing on to somebody that you might know that's be going through. But sometimes, you know, we go through we go through situations, we go through life, we just don't know our back up against the wall. You know, I had this vision once where, you know how you be in a fight, how them fighters be fighting and then they put you on the rope, they put you on the rope and one of them, you be on that rope, boy, they be beating you up, they be beating you up on that rope. But, devil, but the Lord said, somebody need to come off the rope today. Somebody need to get their back off the rope today and stop letting the enemy beat them up in every areas of their life. They ain't got no victory nowhere. What is victory at? The song says, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, I'm going to let you fight that battle, God, because you said you'll fight the battle for us. So I'm going to hold my peace. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stay and I'm going to let you fight the battle for me. I love this fasting and praying, and I was on there a couple of days uh, this week. I love this fasting and praying because you know what? The word of God says some things don't come but by fasting and praying. Some things you're just not going to get unless you fast and pray. I'm sorry. That's what the word of God say. Fast and pray. Glory, glory, glory. Fast and pray. Some things not coming unless you get that. I don't care how you speak the word. God says some things ain't coming unless you fast and pray. So, Pastor, I, 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 I honor you and I commend you for that today because you're giving the people what they need. If they can receive what you're doing, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. And it's going to be better because they're receiving the word of God. Some things don't come up by fasting and praying. You know, stop telling, stop making, making, uh, all these old decisions on your own and stuff and, and people out there not even saved telling you where well, you ought to do this and you ought to do that. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Go to God, follow your faith, go fast and pray. Follow your praise. Give God 15, 20 minutes every day in prayer. Who, oh my God, my God, my God. I hope y'all don't do this. I hope y'all don't do this. I hope, I hope y'all don't do this. I hope y'all don't just go through all day long without giving God some prayer and fasting and praise. Give okay. him. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a thing. Oh, glory. We have a thing. 15 7. Now, our 15 7 is seven days a week. This just stuff, this is just extra right here. 15 minutes a day. It's 24 hours in a day. Something wrong if we can't get God 15 minutes was a prayer. Something is definitely wrong somewhere. And we're all taking care of everything. Everything, man, and everybody else business and, and, and doing this and that. And then when it comes time to sit down and it comes time to, to say to read your word 15 minutes or get God 15 minutes worth of prayer, you're too tired. You're too sleepy. You sit in your lazy boy chair and you're round back. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. Come on now, we got to do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we do better, God is going to do better by us. There you go. <laughs> God said over in Deuteronomy, some things, you know, Hallelujah. some things we got to be obedient. That's what I want to say. Yeah, yeah, obedient yeah. to the word. Some Sweet. things you ain't going to get unless you're obedient. And if yeah, you're not yeah. obedient to the word of God, you might as well drop the mic. You might as well be done. Drop the mic if I'm done. Yeah, my God. Obedient, obedient is better than sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. sacrifice in your book. By my lamb. Come on now. We <laughs> got to be obedient to the <laughs> word of God mm -hmm. in order to get those things that God said we was going to get. Yeah. God said, you can eat the good of the land. You can have the good Woo! fruit. You can have it. And all that come with obedience. We are oh quick to say God. what the word of God says. What good. are we doing? What God. the word of God say? On video. Yes. <laughs> are we doing it? Preaching are we over. doing what God say? Yeah, are we just yeah. talking it? I just lip singing, just lip talking. Oh. Stop all this old lip talking and start doing some stuff that God <laughs> wants us to do. Woo! I'm talking to the body of Christ right now. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. I'm talking to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We can make that mouth say anything. And then when it comes to, oh, yeah, Pastor, okay, yeah, we have a Bible study tonight. All right, then, all right. All right, well, I'll see you there. Pastor, I don't have a Bible study looking for you. Now, if this ain't you, don't get offended. Just say, oh, thank you, Jesus, it ain't me. Then you call it. With some kind of excuse or something. Well, I was gonna come. Got a little cold outside. <laughs> got a little cold outside, so I don't think I'm gonna make it. Mm. Oh my God, I know y'all in California don't do that. But listen, guys, listen. And I'm uh, give me, give me, I'm in the, what I got about five minutes, and then I'm gonna let uh, Pastor continue because I know she's gonna pray and all that stuff. But give, uh, give no, me like no. five. I'm, take your time, pray for him. Hallelujah. Take your time. <laughs> Pray for me. You got to 11 o'clock. You got okay, okay. 20 minutes. Thank Glory you, to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, all right. Listen, listen, listen. Some things are going to come about fasting and praying, and we know that. God said, and I heard Pastor said earlier about tithes and offering stuff. God going to open up a window and pull you out a blessing and all that stuff, and God going to do that. But now don't think it that one is gonna be open and a blessing gonna come out if you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Sometimes it's the hardest thing. Now I know y'all California people don't do that, but I know we have a problem with Texas down here. That's the hardest thing to get God that dime out that dollar. Sometimes it's the hardest thing. You might even, if you make $210. He said, okay, God, I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you that $10. What happened to that dollar out of the other the 10? You ain't paid all your tithe. <laughs> God, it's so good, but I'm going to get off of that. I don't want to talk about that, but I'm just talking about that. But I'm just, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get you guys to see, you have to be obedient to the word in order to get those things. Hallelujah. In order to God got great stuff for us. He got good yes. stuff for us. He said we can eat the fruit of the land. He got so much stuff for us, but we cannot receive it because we're disobedient. We cannot be disobedient to the word of God. We cannot be disobedient. Take my yoke up on and learn of me. God said, come on, take this word. Learn this word. That's all it's saying. Matthew 11, 29, that's all it's saying. Take my word upon and learn of me. How you going to know the ins and the outs and the do's and don'ts if you don't learn? For I am meek and lowly and hard. And he said, and I like this part right here. He said, you shall find rest unto your soul. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So why are you walking around here all burdened down? Toe up on the floor. I mean, just, just toe up on the floor. Why are you walking around here like that? When God said, it's easy. It's easy. And you know, the word of God says in Romans 8 and, 20, and 8 and 37, it says, nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors in him, the Lord Jesus Christ who love us. We are conquerors, people. We just not no castaway. If we were a castaway, Jesus would have never laid his life down for us. He laid his life down for us, not for us to be a castaway. He laid his life down for us because he loved us and he cared for us. But now, you don't think Jesus is going to do his part and we ain't going to do our part? What part of that we don't understand? Well, Jesus already died for us and he did this and he did that. But what about your part? What about what the word say? Are you doing what the word say? Are you studying your word every day? Are you praying every day? Are you fasting every day? What are you doing? And I heard Pastor say something that was so confound earlier in a song or something. Over in Isaiah 43, 18, 19, it says, do not remember the former things. Y'all forget about them former things. They gone. I told y'all about them hot pants I had when God saved me. They've been gone 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> never wanted never wanted to look back at Amen. that life. Amen. Never wanted to look back at that life. Amen. Remember not the former things. Don't even consider the things that are old. Don't sit up here and be talking with your friends and, and your church members. The girl, yeah, you know what? I remember when I, ooh, I remember when I was out there, boy, we used to get down. We used, why are you remembering all that stuff when you in Christ now? Oh, Lord. Live it. <laughs> Stop it. Amen. Amen. Stop Let it go. <laughs> God said, God said, forget that. He said, remember not to form a thing. So I'm supposed to be sitting up around my Christian friend, bishops and pastors and stuff, and telling, man, I remember when I was out there in the club, them drinks sure was good. I don't have any way to know what a drink tastes like now. Come on now. Forget those things because, see, once you forget those things, you can walk into the Thing that God has for you. But you can't get it as you remembering all that old stuff and got all that old other stuff clouded up in your head and up in your mind and up in your spirit. <laughs> Lord, and your spirit I'm... can't be free. Your spirit don't know which way to go or what to do. Because you got it all over the place. <laughs> and just remember we are the head and not the tail. Come on now. What part of that y'all don't understand? Oh, we don't understand. God said we the head. You know, the devil wanted to make us a tail, but we ain't no tail. He a lie. We the head. And, I, and, I, and, 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 and I'm going to finish reading this right here. Do not remember the former things. Consider another things of old. I will do a new thing. See? God said he's going to do a new thing in our life. What the new stuff happening there? What the new stuff there right now? New stuff. New stuff. And then he went and he asked, shall you not know it? You ought to already know I'm going to do a new thing in your life. <laughs> he said, I will even make the roads in the wilderness straight for you. Yeah, in the Lord. river of the Come on now. Yeah, Lord. God wants new things in our lives. Forget mm -hmm. the former things in our lives. Stop saying what we can't do and start saying I can do all things through Christ. Stop talking about people 
ain't gonna ever be anything in life because we're putting our mouth on them. We speak in damnation to them. Let's not do that. Don't do that to your job. Don't do that to your children. Don't do that to your household. Speak life into those kids. Somebody spoke life into us. We didn't have enough sense. We didn't save all our life. Somebody had to help us do. We didn't save all our life. So just as good as somebody helped us, we're going to speak good things on them. And I always had a cliche, and I always said, if God kept me in my mess when I was out there, I'm going to pray for my children that God can keep them while they in their mess until they get enough sense to come on and do what God wants them to do. Amen. I got a daughter right now waiting on her to come on in. The enemy done tried to take out so many times, but God won't let her go. He said, uh-uh, you got to come on up in here and your mama done prayed too hard for you. She coming in. She coming Amen. in. She coming in. Amen. She coming in. Yes, yes, she coming yes, in. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Because I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking that thing. A couple of months ago, she was at a service station and somebody was shooting. She caught a bullet in the back. The devil tried to take out. But at the end of that situation, they went in there, they couldn't even find the bullet. And there wasn't no exit wound. And I know what God can do. Yeah, yeah. Amen. The proud of the righteous are very much. Yes, come on Lord. now. Come on now. We're going to continue to pray, mm, continue to pray for our family. Yeah. Pray for our children. Oh, pray yes. for our household because those prayers are very much. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And we're going to pray that they get it. They'll get it. We got it. We got it. It took us a minute, but we got it. So I said, God, you kept me when I was in my mess when I had the hot pants on ready to go to the club. So I know you can keep them. And we pray for them and we don't speak damnation over them. Not at all. Amen. But Amen. God is just so good. So I want the body of Christ today. I want us to run with this word and know that we're going to stop saying mm -hmm. what we see yeah and we're yeah. gonna see say what we say we're gonna change what we say yes let me say it again. if you don't like what you see in your life today yes, change what you say mm -hmm. say positive things yes yeah. positive things positive results yes yes so I'm going to pray for the body today. Father, we come before you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God. Don't let now words that came out of my mouth, now stripped to God that came out of my mouth, fall on stony grounds today. Yes. I bind the will of the enemy today, God. Let them grasp with what you have said, God. Let them run with it and run fast with it, God. Time is winding up and it's winding down. And we thank and praise you for your word today, God. We thank you that we can do all things through Christ. We thank you that we are more than conquerors today. We thank you that we the head and not the tail today, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God. I send blessings over each and every last one of them in Jesus' name, God. Over pastor, over deacon, Harold, God. Send blessings over the household. In Jesus' name, God, let her continue to run the race that you have her to run, God. Continue to do it for God. I know you gonna got great things for her, and I know you're going to say, I know you're going to do great things for her, God, because I even saw it in the spirit this morning, God. I saw you doing great things, God, and then you manifest that thing to her and let it come real in her spirit, God, that what she needs to do is she'll come back and tell me about it. You do that, Father, in Jesus' name. Each and every member of this household is blessed. I call it blessed in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And let the church say amen. 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 amen.